Dr. Jasmine Walsh. Dr. Dr. Jimmy Collins. Firefighter Michael Tenso Romano. <laughs> and from 283 engine where my dad served for 22 years, firefighter Chris McCormick. <laughs> now just going around the room a little to introduce some of the other members that are here today. And again, in my career, I've served under a couple of division commanders and borough commanders. But most of my career under the find a find a commander, Chief Ed Kilduff. I served on the police. And when I bounced back from division to division, two phenomenal division commanders, dear friends, James Leonard, commander of Division 8, and Nick Monroe, commander of Division 1 1. I also to acknowledge our chiefs who love coming down to these luncheons. From the 4th Reed Battalion in Coney Island, dear friend, Battalion Chief Joe Mackey. <laughs> Deputy Chief from the 8th Division, William Tanzosh. <laughs> we have two on-duty chiefs at Coverborough Park from Battalion 4-0, my good friend John Patton, Chief John Patton. <laughs> from the 4th Battalion, Chief John Buckeye. Again, the members that are being honored, their bosses showed up today from 44 Engine, Captain John Kitcherman. And then we met Lou from 44 Engine. Lou from 44 Engine. And as well, even though they weren't working that night, the members from 250, where are you? Lieutenant Charlie Gilman, please. Members uh, from 250 engines, so we had a real, real big time. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, listen, and last but not least, I apologize. Uh, a final replacement I couldn't find uh, after I got promoted. Al, your back is to me, so I didn't see. Stand up, Al. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, Chief, personally, for the friendship that Hatsama and myself personally for many, many years, as well as Chief Kildorf and every firefighter. Nobody ever wants to turn back the clock, but I remember years ago, I know time, I remember years ago, there was an MBA or a working fire, when Hatsama showed up, we were totally, totally ignored. And today, thank God, we want to look forward to last year, year and a half, or two years, or even a little more, when Hatsama shows up, I would say we're a coordinator, whether it's myself, or Professor Rosman, or Chaim Fisher, or Hetzka Halper, or even a member, we can't show up. Goes over to the chief, says, hi, chief. That's how we trained everybody. We have two buses outside, three paramedics, etc., etc. We're going to be in that corner station. Anything you need, let us know. And he says, thank you very much. The cooperation, that's what we had today. The cooperation, the, pudding, the proof is in the pudding. We saved a life. Many, many lives were saved over the years. But this was one direct that this baby's life, and hopefully, with everybody's prayers, like I said before, and we're all praying for it, this baby is going to have a full recovery. And that's Hashem, I want to tell the Father, God's willing, we're going to dance by the wedding together. Everybody's going to be very, very happy. <laughs> and thank you, you have a lot of nachos from her, from the twin, and all the other children that you have, you and the grandfather. I don't want to bore anybody with speeches. We have one more presentation. Before we do that, I'd like to elaborate a little bit the relationship that we have, as we see before, with Methodist Hospital. We have the same relationship and sometimes have a different relationship with Mamandi's Hospital. These two gentlemen standing behind me, Dr. Bieberfeld. Anytime we have a crisis, no matter what time of the night, we're all human, we're all volunteers, none of us get paid. God forbid we find a child underneath the car or something like that, we can't eat, we can't sleep. We go home, look at our own children, and thank God that you know, it wasn't a child, but we still feel for each other, regardless of race and religion. Now, we're, we're celebrating here the set that we saved a child. When this child was born to Mamandi's hospital, couldn't go to the burn center because the airway was compromised. 
we have people from NYPD trying to give us an escort over to Staten Island Bridge, Rosanna Bridge rather, into Staten Island. And the cooperation was phenomenal. Unfortunately, the kid wasn't stable enough to go that night or we the next night. But this same story happened about a year, year and a half ago when there was an Afro-American family who was burnt someplace on East 7 in Katali Road. Our members were doing CPR. I don't, remember, I don't remember who was there for the fire department. It was about a year and a half. And we did the same thing. We don't look at religion. We don't look at skin color. A human being to us is a human being. And we always take that in consideration. I would like to ask Dr. Lieberfeld, and maybe later on, and Moses, um, Douglas Jablon, who several times a day, the beeper goes off just from Hatzal alone. Hatzal members, we bother them. Dr. Lieberfeld gives us the briefing. Douglas helps us out with doctors. Anything we need for Hatzal, the beds, doctors, special attention, they're always there for us. I'd like to ask him to share their thoughts. Thanks so much.